In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in Christ, we gather this day to keep this holy feast of Pentecost when God first poured His Holy Spirit out upon His disciples. This was unlike anything that had ever happened before. For in Jesus Christ, the Lord God put on flesh and humbled Himself that we may become receptacles of His divine grace and mercy. And so we rejoice this day of Pentecost, but our rejoicing is not without a certain amount of sorrow as we also say goodbye to Christ Lutheran Academy. This accomplishes its last academic year. And our hearts are sad. But our Lord Jesus Christ says, in the midst of all of our difficulties, in the midst of all of our pains, the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and bring to remembrance all I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give to you. Our Lord Jesus Christ comes to give us peace. A peace that is unlike the peace of the world. The world would say that there is only peace in the absence of strife, in the absence of conflict, in the absence of war, in the absence of sorrow. That is how the world gives peace, in the absence of all difficulties. But our Lord Jesus Christ gives us peace in a different way, in a perfect way. My peace I give to you. He says, not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. For our Lord Jesus Christ comes in the very midst of our difficulties, in the very midst of our conflicts, in the very midst of our sorrows. He doesn't simply remove the conflict, the sorrow, the anguish. He comes in the midst of it and he dwells amongst us. Our Lord Jesus Christ gives us peace even when there is sorrow. Even when there is anguish and conflict, strife and war and tumult, our Lord Jesus Christ gives us that perfect and abiding peace even when our school would close. Even when congregations around us are closing. Our Lord Jesus Christ gives us a peace that is unlike the peace of the world. For our Lord Jesus Christ comes to us in our sinfulness, and He has mercy on us. Our Lord Jesus Christ sends the Holy Spirit, the Helper, to remind us in the midst of our sin, in the midst of our anguish, in the midst of our sorrow, he sends the Holy Spirit to bring to remembrance all that He has taught us. His holy word. Christ has died for your sins, beloved. Nothing can change this. No amount of sorrow, no amount of grief, no amount of war or conflict or tribulation can change that Christ has loved you with an everlasting love. That Christ has seen you in your sinfulness. That Christ has reached down into the pit and lifted you up. He has set your feet upon a rock. He has put a new song in your mouth. What can change this, beloved? And as if that were not enough, He sends us a great helper, a great comforter, the Holy Spirit who comes not to teach us how to talk in some kind of newfangled way, a bunch of gobbledygook that no one can understand. He sends us the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the Helper, not to teach us how to flop around or to lose our minds. He sends us the Holy Spirit, the Helper, the Comforter, not to teach us that what was once considered sin is now considered holy living. No, He sends us the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the Helper. To point you back to Jesus Christ in your trials, in your heartache, in your suffering. To point you back to your good Savior who has died for you. This, beloved, is your comfort and this is your help. 
And this is what we rejoice in. This, the Feast of Pentecost. Though our school is closing, though our sister congregation, Lamb of God, is closing, though other congregations around us are closing, and it is, by all accounts, a very difficult and trying time for the church. Christ has died for your sins. This is what the Holy Spirit brings to your remembrance. The Holy Spirit is a crucifer for us in the midst of our lives, holding up Christ and Him crucified, that you may see and trust and believe. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid, beloved. Though the devil would rage with all his might, he cannot touch you. Though the devil would close this school, this church, or that church, though the devil would bring to us all kinds of difficulties, though our sinful flesh would cause us to endure the consequences of sin, even death, let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. For Christ has won. Christ has claimed victory over death, over sin, over the devil, over your flesh. And Christ, your good Lord, who has died for you, has sent the Holy Spirit, that you may be washed in the waters with His own blood and righteousness, that you may now stand before God clothed in the holiness of Jesus Christ, that you may receive here from this altar not just bread and wine to nourish your bodies for time, but the very true and living body and blood of Jesus Christ, your good Savior, who has not left you, who will never leave you. And so, what more then can the devil do to us? Take our school. You can't take Christ. Take our churches. You can't take Christ. For the church will stand even in the very gates of hell. And though we rightly mourn the loss of so many things in our lives, it is the Holy Spirit who calls us back, who points to the man who died upon the cross for your sins, who points to his wounds. Look, the Holy Spirit says, your name is inscribed upon the very palms of his hands. Look, the Holy Spirit says, the water and the blood that pours forth from his side has now washed you and cleansed you. Look, he says, this body and blood which was offered up upon the tree of the cross is now offered here for you on your altars. Look, the Holy Spirit says, I have never left you nor forsaken you. I am going away and I will come to you. And so, beloved, Peace I leave with you, Jesus says. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Christ is victorious. Christ is our Lord and Master. Christ has saved us from our sins, from the wrath and judgment that we richly deserve. Christ has done all of this for you. Do you think that he will so quickly turn his back on you? Do you think that he will ever leave you? Rejoice, O beloved saints of God in Jesus Christ. Your heavenly Father has heard your prayers and provides well for all your needs. He has given you peace, an abundant peace. A peace which surpasses all understanding. And now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. Amen.